And so then our next speaker is uh, Janie Leo from uh, Ozan's lab, and she will tell us about the type 6 secretion system of Campylobacter. So today I'm going to be talking about the role of the Campylobacter jejuni type 6 secretion system and in silico identification of putative type 6 effectors. So to start with a very brief background of type 6, it is a nano ejectosome that is present in 25% of gram-negative bacteria, resembles an inverted bacteriophage tail-like structure. The type 6 structure is comprised of a membrane anchoring structure, a base plate structure, a contractile sheath here, which then surrounds a TSSD needle-like tube. And then this is topped by a sharp punctured tip at the very end with VGRG and power components. And how it works is in response to an extracellular signal, the sheath contracts very rapidly. And this then produces enough force to propel the TSSD new needle out of the cell and through a target membrane. And TSSD components, the spike complex and any associated effectors are then delivered into the target cell. And these target cells can either be prokaryotic or eukaryotic cells. In many bacteria, the type 6 has been very well studied and has been found to be involved in a number of roles, such as in colonization, niche establishment, and interaction of host cells. We're interested in the Campy type 6 because a high prevalence was found in isolates from around the world in countries such as Vietnam, Egypt, and Finland. In the UK, a study in 2015 found that nearly 30% of chicken isolates were type 6 positive. And recently published data suggests that the actual figures could be much higher than this. So therefore, it is important that we look into the role of the type 6 and Campy in order to try and understand why these strains are becoming so prevalent. And in contrast to other bacteria, the Campy type 6 has not been very well studied. We know from two key papers that C. has a functional type 6, as it is able to secrete TSSD into the culture supernatant. The type 6 is required for adherence and invasion of a human and mirror cell line and for colonization of mice. And also the type 6 is important in cytotoxicity to its red blood cells. So for our study, we obtained 488, which is a recent human clinical isolate from Brazil, and we performed whole genome sequencing to analyze the type 6 cluster in the strain. This sequence was compared with sequences for other type 6 positive strains, and the comparisons revealed a type 6 cluster that's highly conserved in human and chicken isolates. And in the 488 wild type strain, we found TSSD to be secreted out into the supernatant and therefore indicating that the strain has a functional type 6. And when we mutate either TSSD or the TSSBC contractile sheet structures, TSSD is no longer secreted, indicating that the type 6 is no longer functional in these mutants. So then we wanted to see whether the presence of the type 6 is able to cause more cytotoxicity in a host model. And we started with the Galeria model infection with the um, the larvae of the greater wax moth, and we inject them with three strains, the 4A wild type strain, the 4A TSSD mutant, and a type 6 negative A1176, which is a lab reference strain. And survival of the larvae were examined over a duration of five days. At days four and five, the 4A wild type strain was significantly more cytotoxic than the TSSD mutant at A1176. And moving on to a more biologically relevant model, when they looked at the ability of the same three strains to adhere to and invade chicken primary intestinal cells. The 4A wild type strain showed significantly higher levels of adherence and invasion than the TSSD mutant, and also appeared to do so than the A1176. We also performed chick infection studies with infection of 15 Darabrola chickens using the same three strains. At three days post-infection, we looked at the number of viable bacteria in the Zika, and the number of the 4A wild type strain present was higher than the TSSD mutant. So these results combined will indicate that the presence of the type 6 is important in enhancing the ability of C. to colonize chickens. And during host colonization, Campy is exposed to oxidative stress in the gastrointestinal tract, and the type 6 has been linked with the oxidative stress response in a number of other bacteria. So to investigate whether this is also the case with the Campy type 6, we expose the 4A wild type TSSD mutant and A1176 strains to hydrogen peroxide. In following exposure, the 4A wild type is more resistant to the oxidative stress killing compared to the TSSD mutant and A1176. So this would indicate that the type 6 is associated with the oxidative stress response in Campylobacter jejuni. And so these, paper, these results were published in a paper in Frontiers of Microbiology. And now we have an idea of what some of the roles the type 6 plays in Campy. However, the biggest question that remains is what are the effectors secreted by the Campy type 6? So far, no type 6 effectors has been identified or characterized in Campylobacter species. TSSD is thought to be able to potentially act as an effector. However, this has not been definitely proven in Campy. It's by knocking out TSSD, we actually knock out functionality of the entire type 6. 
So what can we do to identify these type 6 effectors? And uh, when talking about types of effectors, it is also important to mention the two key components of the type 6 that are associated with the delivery of the effectors. This is VGRG and PAR. At the very end of the TSSD or HCP tube, there's a trimer of VGRGs that is further sharpened by a PAR protein. And together, these form the sharp puncturing device. At, uh, VGRG is comprised of two domains, a conserved N-terminal domain and a variable C-terminal domain. In the C-terminal region of VGRGs can determine the type of effectors that is delivered. Some VGRGs and PAR proteins can also directly fuse to a toxic C-terminal domain. These are called evolved VGRGs or PARs. VGRGs or PARs that do not have the toxic C-terminal domain are known as canonical VGRGs or PARs. And um, many bacteria encode for multiple VGRGs or PARs that serve different functions or are active in different niches. Some VGRGs are located far away from the main types of cell product. These are known as orphan VGRGs. Type effectors and immunity genes are frequently found downstream of VGRGs. So analyzing the region surrounding VGRGs is often a good starting point for identifying type 6 effectors. However, in Campylobacter, studies have so far identified only one VGRG, which is part of the main type 6 operon, and PAR has not yet been identified in Campylobacter species. So we examined the type 6 secreted home of the 4A strain using mass spec, where we discovered the presence of a second secreted VGRG protein, which is not found in our original 4A genome sequence. So to see where the second VGRG is located, we then resequenced and reassembled the 4A genome against a type 6 positive M129 strain. And so this is from the resequenced and reassembled 4A8. The main type 6 cluster is here in green. And the first VGRG or VGRG1 is located at the end of the main type 6 cluster. The second VGRG, which we have named VGRG2, is located further downstream, and this is an orphan VGRG. And these two VGRGs have a conserved internal region and variable C-terminal domains. And as the C-terminal regions do not appear to contain toxic effector domain, both VGRGs are therefore canonical VGRGs rather than involved. And the new genome sequence for 4 a also revealed a host of other genes that are of interest. We also identified two proteins that are predicted to have PAR-like domains. And these proteins have conserved cysteine and histine residues that are similar to par domain kind of containing proteins in other bacteria. Both of these PAR-like proteins do not appear to have an active effector domain and are therefore unlikely to act as effectors themselves. So one of these um, PAR-like proteins is located upstream of the main type 6 cluster, and a second PAR-like protein is located in a genetically variable region in between VGRG1 and VGRG2. And this genetically variable region is found in a number of types of positive strains and is typically found between the two VGRGs. This region can vary in size from six genes in 001597 strain to up to 25 genes in 149808 strain. We further analyzed the genes in this region using predictive tools. And a closer look at this region revealed a number of putative effectors and immunity genes. So we identified multiple effectors with predicted tox ray 7 domains, colored in magenta here, and another protein with a tox AHH domain in yellow here. And these domains are part of large toxin superfamilies with predicted functions such as DNases and nucleases. We also identified a protein with a TNT tuberculosis necrotizing toxin domain in red here. And in mycobacterium tuberculosis, TNT is a glycohydrolase that depletes NAD plus within host cells, causing cell death. We also identified a number of anchor and repeat containing proteins in salmon pink here, located adjacent to putative effectors. And we hypothesize that these anchor and repeat containing proteins may be the cognate immunity proteins to these effectors. So these results were published in a paper in Frontiers of Microbiology a couple of months ago. We have now created mutants for these putative effectors and immunity proteins. And we're currently working on characterizing these in Campylobacter jejuni. So thank you all for listening. I'd also like to thank the team at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. And we're also our many collaborators, Professor Nikolai Kuzhenrovsky at AFBI, Dr. Abdi Khachani at the University of Melbourne, Dr. Arno Van Vliet at the University of Surrey, and Dr. Dong Sha at the Royal Veterinary College. Thank you. Thank you very much, Janie, for this great uh, insights into the type 6 secretion system. So we have uh, several questions on Discord. So Ben Pasco asks, can the differences in type 6 secretion system prevalence be explained by the differences in lineages that are common in those countries or regions? I guess that's possible. I don't think anyone's actually looked into the lineages of these strains, but 
it's a possibility, yes. And Tom Wilkinson asks, uh, so he says great uh, schematic figures, and he's wondering whether the type 6 secretion system in Campylobacter has specificity for certain gut or immune cells. I suppose that's unknown at the moment. We're trying to figure out what these effectors do, and hopefully some of these effectors will have an effect in a host. And I guess that's something we need to um, figure out. Mm -hmm. Okay, and thank you very much again, Janie.